Hey everybody and welcome to week five of our Dangerous Prayers online Bible study. My name is Kendra and I am the manager of online Bible studies, but really all that means is I get to do the study right alongside you, which is one of my favorite parts of my job. And I am joined by a guy you have seen for the past five weeks. He is author and Pastor Craig Rochelle, author of Dangerous Prayers. Happy to sit with you, Craig. Hey, thank you, Kendra, and welcome back for another week. Yes, we are very excited because we are moving in to another prayer that you cover in Dangerous Prayers, and it is on the topic of send me. Yes. Now, before we get into a little bit about me and the prayer that I pray that deals with that, a lot of people might hear send me and mm -hmm. think if they pray that, it is, it's going to take them away from their home and maybe to a third world, third world country yep. or maybe go across America or wherever they may be. So what do you say about the prayer send me and if, if somebody thinks like that? Well, I would say if you pray send me, that God could send you to a third world country or something like that. <laughs> More likely, uh, God will give you eyes to see something right in front of you or, or heart for some people around you. And one, one of the things, Kendra, I think is always interesting is sometimes people view their workplace or their profession as being less spiritual than maybe someone who's a pastor or a mm -hmm. worship leader or something. And I always try to tell them, you know, not only is that not less spiritual, but in many ways, you've got a far bigger opportunity to impact mm -hmm. lives all the time. And when you, when you pray, send me, I would brace yourself because chances are you might end up with a heart for something that you didn't before. You'll probably find yourself in a place where you feel a little bit uncomfortable, meaning like, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I have what it takes to get this message across, yeah. or I, I might not feel good enough. And I think one of the reasons is, is because God's going to put you in a place where you really have to depend on Him. And uh, you, so you, you may not have to pack your bags to wherever <laughs> He sends you. Chances are there'll be something much closer and within reach. But whether you have to pack your bags or you don't, I would get ready to experience uh, a new level of faith and uh, an opportunity to be obedient to a calling you may not have realized otherwise. Yeah, so we all have to gear up in case in case that is the case. Get ready. Yeah. Yes. So my prayer has to deal with send me. And as I was thinking about what I could talk with you about, it took me back to when I was 22. I was fresh out of college and it was 2014. I had a job that I wasn't the best at. I didn't know if I belonged there per se. And every day to and from work, I would cry in the car hmm. and talk to God about this is, there's no way this is what you have for me. This is no way there's no way I'm supposed to be here. There's no way I'm supposed to do this. This is not what I thought my life would look like. And you could say I was having what I consider a quarter life crisis. <laughs> um, and I wanna talk to anybody right now where you, God can use you wherever you are, no matter what job you have. And I realize that now looking back at this job, I'm like, it prepped me for where I am. So I'm very grateful for it. But I remember just crying and I was so confused on why God had me where he did. And you wrote something in your book that really resonated with me, and that is, send me, Lord, use me. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I wanted. I desperately wanted that. And I think I was ready for the send. I didn't know what that looked like, but I wasn't ready for the change mm -hmm. in which came with it. And I think, like you said, sometimes it can make you uncomfortable, and you need to be ready for whatever that may look like. Um, that prayer led me to move from Ohio, where I'm originally from, to North Carolina, it, um, it had me move without uh, an offer letter for a job. Wow. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if I got the job at Proverbs yet. Um, and it, it not only did it, I gain a lot from it, but there was a lot of change that came with it. I lost friendships over it. Mm -hmm. um, I lost comfort and familiarity. Um, I, it removed me from the proximity of family. Um, but it gave me other relationships. It gave me a new comfort for the city in which I was in. Um, it gave me a newfound purpose. But sometimes things, um, the hardest things require removal. And yeah. I think that was the hardest part of it. So in chapter 3.2, you say, his call usually requires you to surrender your own plans and preferences and go where he tells you, when he tells you, how he tells you, to meet who he tells you, and to do what he tells you. Mm. And what I find so interesting about that quote that you put is you have to surrender your own plans. So you mm -hmm. talked to Melissa about you can't necessarily go into it like this. Eventually, right. you have to be open palm. And that's exactly what I had to do. And so what do you say to somebody who 
needs to surrender their own plans or what advice do you have for somebody on how to do that? Well, I think one of the one, one of our biggest desires is to kind of go to God and have him do what we want. Mm -hmm. Oh, easy. And, yeah. <laughs> and so here's my here's my prayer list with, you know, the 15 things I want you to do. Right. And I would say God does care about all the details of your life. But occasionally, rather than going to him with your wish list, maybe you go to him with a blank piece of paper hmm. and say, you, you know, what would you like of me? And I think that's one of the dangerous things about prayer is so often we think it's me talking, me talking, me talking. Right. But if, if I stand here and we're supposed to have a conversation and I talk the whole time and I don't ever listen to you, that's not really a conversation. Yeah. And so I think we need to go before God with that posture of I want to listen mm -hmm. As, as well as I want to speak. And, and so often we tend to think we know either what he wants or we tend to attribute what we want to being his will. Yeah. And so often he has something totally and completely different, so in, like in your case. And it does, you know, to, to go to that new place and to have that new kind of impact, mm -hmm. it does mean often letting go of everything that is yeah. comfortable to you, everything that makes you feel secure, everything that's known. And because to take that step of faith is what it is. And it is a step of faith. And, yeah. and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. And I think the thing that has shocked me the most as I reflected on that time preparing for this is not only did I give things up right away, right as I was driving down from Ohio to North Carolina, but four years later, there's still things that I'm having to give up in order to fully step into mm -hmm. the position at Proverbs or other relationships that I have. Like I just had to have a friendship breakup, if you will, mm -hmm. with one of my nearest and dearest friends of all time. And I never thought that friendship would end. I felt very secure in that friendship, but I saw that it was toxic and mm -hmm. it was part of who I used to be and I needed to mm -hmm. break it off. But I think that's the hardest part of Send Me is you can step out in faith, but it doesn't mean that God's going to stop there. There's mm -hmm. going to be other things and um, little steps of obedience to get to you mm -hmm. to where you need to go. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes this send me, you might not actually go anywhere. Like I, right. I, uh, I wish Amy, my wife, could talk to you because she's got so much wisdom. But um, we raised and are still raising six kids together. And in the early years, I could tell she had a real send me heart. Mm -hmm. Like I want to go out and do something. Yeah. And her assignment really was these children mm. and so while she had a lot more to offer in her mind that was her assignment and so she had to step into it and really embrace it once they were a little bit older suddenly she had this massive burden for marginalized women mm. and it was almost a burden she didn't want it was like it was so heavy so strong yeah. that it, she couldn't not deal with it mm -hmm. and so it, it took her on a real faith journey of doing things she'd never done before starting a nonprofit, yeah. finding a team, opening up what started as one little home and has now grown to multiple homes and a full-blown staff. But it was like in the early years, I wanted to be sent and I'm now you know, raising kids. Right. And the other years, later, later on, it's like I wasn't asking for this, but now <laughs> I'm being sent. And it, it, it led her on this just real journey. And I think the, the bottom line is that when you're obedient, to where God's planting you and take that step of faith. Yeah. You can, kind of like you, 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 ending a friendship's really difficult. Yeah. Redefining it, but stepping into, I like what you said is that's not who I am anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not, that's a part of my past. And, and I, I think we can all say that in our current moment of that I am, I'm different now yeah. because I'm being conformed to the image of Christ. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Craig, thank you so much for speaking into the prayer of Send Me. I know we have another week with all of you, and then next week you're going to be back with Lisa yeah. Turkhurst and, and Melissa. Thank you for saying yes, or you wouldn't oh. be here interviewing, and you could be back somewhere else. You're and, right. We yeah. would have never had this opportunity right, yeah, to chat, yeah. so look at that. It worked yeah. out. And for you, too, don't be afraid. Take the step of faith. If there's a stirring, you, you won't, might not feel equipped. Right. You're not going to know all the details. I always say this, that if um, God gave you all the details, you'd probably run for the hills. Absolutely. So you don't That's need the true. details. You just need to take the next obedient step. And if you pray, send me, he will. Get ready. You may have to pack your bags. You may not, but you will have to take a step of faith. That's great. And you have been here to where we've ended each video with yeah. our tagline. So do you want to see if you can help? Oh, start out, yes. All right. Okay. When you know the truth. And when you live the truth. It changes. It changes everything. everything. That was great. Thank great you. job. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>